Uh, hi lovely people, it's Candy here. Welcome back to my channel. Today I am doing a VR to the lovely Katie Flowers for her tag only 10 decks. So only 10 decks, if you could only take 10, including Oracle and Tarot, which 10 decks would you take? Now, I filmed this a few times because I keep changing my mind. <laughs> Thank goodness this is only hypothetical and I don't have to pick 10 decks in real life because boy it's difficult. So what 10 decks would I pick? Now in my bag I can't just think about me because I'm a single mom. I am a mom of a uh, special needs mama as well and some of my favourite times with tarot are sharing tarot and oracle with my kiddies. We start the day with oracle decks and Part of my bag has got to be handed over to my kids. If I'm only walking out the door with 10 decks, I'm giving them some decks. And, they, and Tilly was very clear which decks needed to come with us. So I'm going to start with those. So the first is this Field Guide to Garden Dragons. The artwork is by Stanley Morrison. Um, it's written by Arwen Lynch. It's just the most beautiful little oracle deck. Uh, we start every day with it. These are the back. And you've got dragons that are, that are linked to food. And each card has got a key word on it. Every morning we find out what dragon's back we're climbing onto. We find out which dragon is going to fly us through the day. It's an absolutely glorious deck. We all absolutely adore it. Um, I just can't imagine starting the day off without these glorious cards. So deck number one, the Field Guide to Garden Dragons. The second deck, again it's picked by the kids. This was the first oracle deck that they ever really became connected to. It's just a little two pound deck I picked up second hand. Spirit and Destiny, the Mythical Creatures Affirmation Cards. This is a, um, it, it uses the elements. We have, if I show you the backs, we have unicorns are earth, mermaids are water, fairies are air, dragons are fire. So that just all makes sense. And these cards, again, we often start the day off to see which energy we're working with. Are we working with air for the day and, and fairies? Are we working with unicorns? Are we working with dragons and fire? Or are we working with mermaids and water? And some of these cards' messages are really a lot deeper than you would think. Things like this, I release all that no longer serves me. Or the universe delivers in unexpected ways. I am transforming my life into, in powerful ways, just some really nice um, journal prompts. I am kind to myself as I am to others. Some great messages on here to work with the kids. So that's the second deck that makes it into my bag. The next deck that would absolutely have to come with us is the Divine Dog's Wisdom Cards. Again, this one picked by Tilly, but absolutely given space in my bag for my final 10 with joy for me because I love this deck too. We're definitely doggy people in this house. We've got the two rescue dogs, Rupert and Luna. And the setup of this deck is really lovely. I love the big white border with the paw print. I love the art style. It's really clear to use. These are the backs. It's just really lovely. The artwork and the emotions in the dog's faces are really something. You've got just some really lovely imagery to work with. After we've pulled our dragon card and found what dragon's back we're flying on through the day, we pull a dog card to find out 
what dog is going to woof messages at us and it's just a lovely way to start our day so this is the divine dogs wisdom cards just one of our favorites and i've used up the space of three decks already deck number four my first tarot deck in the mix and it's this one the original Rider Waite tarot deck which i've had right from the start of my tarot practice i bought it from my local metaphysical shop because i knew there was this thing called a Rider Waite tarot i thought there was only one version of it that's how new to tarot i was i was really pleased when my local shop had it in and I bought it and then discovered that I could have picked so many different varieties of this deck once I discovered Tarot Tube. So this deck was bought pre me discovering Tarot Tube. And is it my favourite Rider Waite version? Absolutely not. This is a very uncelebrated deck. It's the one that most people, I think, roll their eyes at because the printing's quite smudgy and thick-lined and unclear. And I was really disappointed when I realised I could have had a pick online of loads of different versions. It's the one with these blue backs. But you know what? No, I just love it. I love the colours in it. I love this kind of green with the mustard. Um, I like its kind of vintage feeling and I do actually quite like its muddy black printing as well but that's not why I picked it. I picked it because it's the deck that my dad's voice started to come through to me now. After I lost my dad 14 years ago he came to me in a series of visitation dreams that were really predictive and warning dreams so he was gone but he's always there's always been a thread connecting us um and then one day i felt a call to come to this deck and talk to him and the readings that i got <sighs> were just incredible i also get repeating cards with my dad's readings i never i never pull this deck and force a reading i wait until i feel a, a voice whispering to go and get the deck and i get repeating cards as kind of a indicator that it is him and yeah it's my connection to my dad it would be the deck as well that if i wanted to do any sort of mediumship working or mediumship spread i would reach for this deck so it's quite an important deck in my practice i don't think i'd reach for any other deck for that reason so of course this could not be left behind that's my first tarot in the mix and then another oracle, an absolute workhorse for me that's never put away. And that's this one, the Moon Oracle by Caroline Smith and John Astrop. Um, this never gets put away. Now, I often say that the moon makes me feel grounded, which seems odd seeing as it's up in the sky. But it does. If I start to disconnect or at worst dissociate which i struggled with for years extreme dissociation um i know that i've disconnected from the earth from the garden from nature and from the moon and the the positions of the moon in the sky once i start to feel that coming on i know i need to reconnect with the moon and this deck is brilliant for it it normally comes out at least on new moons and full moons and uh, the readings i get from it are always bang on accurate really they really push me uh, and i just love this deck i can't imagine that those are the backs i can't imagine hitting a new moon or full moon without this deck to reach for it now it's composed of three different uh card sections so you've got these with the big numbers on these are the moon mansions and there are a number of moon mansion cards 
which are absolutely beautiful and they help tell the story within the reading. So these are all the Moon Mansion cards. Then you have 12 Goddess cards to pull the energy for the month for different goddesses, which again, I love. And they help set the energy up for the month. And then you have the actual moon position card. And again, this kind of gives you the energies that you're working with. Um, and then you combine these different sets of cards within different readings. Now, there are readings in the book which help you to understand how to use this deck. And I always use the, the spreads, rather, the spreads in the book. Um, I normally use, I think it's the Seven Sisters spread, which is seven cards. That's the one I normally go to. I am going to sh quickly show you the book because the book is a huge part of of the deck because at the back of the book you've got the dates for all of the different positions of the moon through each month. Now these moon tables go up to 2032 um, and I it's the first thing I turn to every month this book is out I write down the dates. There's the Seven Sisters spread um, in the back. Um, it's just a, a workhorse and I love it. So that is deck number five. We've got to deck number five already. I literally don't know how I'm going to do this. Okay, deck number six is something that fulfills the Sagittarian creative fire aspect of myself. It's a deck that I really connected and bonded with really strongly and i just i love it i can't imagine not having it and that's it osho zen tarot do i think this art is the most beautiful art of the, any tarot decks i've got no so what is it it's it's just the way this deck reads uh it's it's quirkiness I think it's the connection, it's the way I have worked with it, connected with it, bonded with it, studied it. Um, I think um, the cards just speak into my soul when I do readings with this deck. If I want to do a reading where I don't, don't want any work in trying to um, really get to grips with what the deck's telling me if i just want a deck that i understand and i know its language oh, i love i love this card so much then then this is the deck this is the deck that i will turn to it is um it is just wonderful these are the backs um i think lisa Pepez helped me bond with this as well she has a fantastic deep dive on this deck which I watched in segments as I read the guidebook and that really helped me to bond with it. It has an incredibly tough reading sword suit as well so it definitely delves into trickier areas as well but even with that aside I can't imagine being without it. So that's deck number six. I'm going to stick with tarot and Oh, I'm, I, I'm leaving out soul decks. I'm leaving out all the chrysanthemum decks. I'm leaving out Tower of the Crown, Carnival at the End of the World, the Lightseers, the Sacred Creators Oracle. All of those. I haven't, I haven't got an animal deck in here. This is so difficult to do. So the next tarot is relatively new to me. The Stretch Tarot but I can't be without it because if I am doing sort of magical workings within tarot, I mean, look at those glorious backs, and I'm turning a tarot spread into a tarot spell spread, this is the deck that I reach for. I love the earthy colours. I love the collage together imagery. Uh, I love how earthy and dark and deep and mysterious it feels. 
I love the way it lends itself to magic workings. So this is when I'm stepping beyond tarot into spell working. I've only just started delving into that area, but what I've done so far with collected found objects as well and earth as well has been part of it and found things from nature. This deck is without fail the only one that you'll see me reaching for and because of that there is a whole possibility of magic working and magic study within this deck that this deck holds a promise of so I just couldn't be without it. So the stretch tarot would be my next step with that same idea in mind of working with tarot with a witchcraft spiritual journey and a kind of earthy path i couldn't be without the witch's wisdom tarot i love the changed order in this deck i love the fact that it starts off at the cosmos uh, the world card and then brings you back down to earth with the full being the final of the majors actually on earth i love that reversed order it makes total sense to me and i love how connected with the earth and that pagan walk this deck feels the packaging is second to none the book is glorious. I love Phyllis Curot's work and her writing. And uh, I think this deck is wonderful. So this deck pushed out quite a few other key soul decks of mine. Um, so like I said, the Tower of the Crone, the Carnival at the End of the World, the Lightseers, all of those um, didn't make it in. This one got picked over those, I think because it feels so earthy. I am, I'm a fire sign, I'm a true Sagittarius. I've also got Leo rising, so I'm double fire. However, my moon is in Capricorn, so that just makes total sense. Double fire, with creativity, but with a moon in earth. And for me, this deck, balances out the Osho Zen and brings that sort of earth energy in. So it doesn't surprise me if you're looking at things from a astrological point of view that the Osho Zen and this deck were the ones that made it in for my tarot decks. So the Witch's Wisdom with its beautiful earthy pagan images which celebrate nature and the earth and also give me that um, animal spirit energy as well, which I would be missing with this selection of 10. Uh, this, this deck just hits all of those boxes. So that's the Witch's Wisdom Tarot by Phyllis Curot. And of course the artwork is by the fantastic Danielle Barlow. So I only have two decks left and both of these surprisingly are Oracle. I couldn't go anywhere without the Iris Oracle. For me, this is the deck that speaks to me of recovering from trauma, of healing. Um, I had to leave behind my song deck of the dreams of Gaia, which I can't believe didn't make it in, but it hasn't. Um, but this deck kind of fills that gap. Uh, it speaks fantastically to my family history, my personal path. If any deck felt like it had been drawn specifically for me uh, and, and had been a fly on the wall of the path that I walked, this is the deck. Uh, it's not shipped to the UK, well it, it wasn't the last time I looked anyway. Um, I'll leave links to the deck on Etsy, but I actually found this second hand from a UK seller on eBay. These are the backs. It came to me quite battered. It had been really used. And of course, um, some of you may have heard that it's the only deck I've ever edged in black. And I, uh, you can see it's coming off already. I use this deck such a lot. Um, and because I didn't like the smell of the Sharpie, I sprayed the whole deck in perfume and popped it away in the box. And the whole thing stuck together 
and the ink started coming off and I had to redraw with different coloured felt tip pens where the ink came off. It was quite a trauma journey, but it was funny. It took so much work to get this step back to usable that I felt like we had kind of sat in the trauma of that together and it was the, the way we bonded. And considering I bought this deck to recover from the shadows of trauma, it just seemed really apt. And now I can't believe it. it's almost like it never happened, um, but it took, it took days and days and days to rectify the damage I did. Uh, but I love it. I, it's the reason why I haven't bought the Reclaim Oracle because I felt like the Reclaim Oracle might push this one out and I don't want anything stepping on this deck's toes because it's so special to me. So that's the Iris Oracle. So that means I only have room for one more. How difficult has this been? There are no plant oracles in here. There's no Lucy Cavendish oracles. The Raven's Prophecy isn't in here. The Thoth isn't in here. Well, they're not in here because I couldn't go anywhere without the Weavers Oracle. This deck is the cornerstone, really, of my spiritual practice. This is my altar deck. It lives upon my altar. I pull a card a month with the full moon. Uh, is it the full? No, with the new moon with this deck. And I use this deck for my meditation practice. These are the backs. Of course, I've got an art degree in constructed textiles. So the fact it's linked to weaving is just wonderful and cloth. But I love the badass divine feminine energy in this deck as well. I've had some of my most profound altar experiences with the characters in this deck. Uh, I actually think that it's it's just a really, really important element of this. It's helped me to develop my visualization in magic. It's helped me to develop the gift of um, Claire Audience, which I've always had, but didn't recognize what it was. Um, these characters, will speak if you sit quietly and listen to them. The cloth will speak as well. The patterns speak. And for my creative soul, this deck really is wonderful. So that's it, guys. Only 10 decks. Those would be my 10. Thank you to the lovely Katie Flowers for starting this fantastic tag. It's really interesting to see what everybody else is picking. I've really enjoyed watching the videos. I'll link Katie's original video in the description box below. And um, thanks so much for watching, guys, and I will see you next time. Bye.